Greetings, all my fellow Americans. This is Tommy Sides coming to you from Mapumalanga, South Africa. And uh, I'm your independent missionary here, slash Christian music artist. I've got an album on iTunes, Stranded No More, because in Jesus, we are stranded no more, amen. And uh, actually, I'm hoping at the end of this video, to include the theme song on my album uh, at the end of this video I really think that uh, it needs to be out there and I'm just gonna give it to you share it with all the folks share this video like we really need your you to like give it a thumbs up because it helps the algorithms and um, and subscribe to our channel uh, I'm gonna hope to get on here more often I'm not on here a lot. I think I've had like three or four videos on this election. So I'm not on here all the time, but I've been fasting a lot, okay? And um, many days and praying and seeking the Lord. My wife moves in the prophetic. Sometimes I do myself. Um, man, I had a dream last August 2020. I woke up. Well, right before I woke up, I was told, I saw a, a, a vision, well, in the dream, I saw his, I saw his image, uh, Joe Biden, and I was just told he will be elected the President of the United States, and I could smell the stench of hell, I really could, and the dread, and the doom. I woke up in a sweat, thinking, man, what is this? And you know... I didn't want to believe it because Donald Trump is so popular with the people and and I thought well, this just must be some crazy dream but I really feel now the Lord was trying to warn me and I should have warned you I should have made a video about it and I didn't my wife moves in the prophetic and after this election I was fasting and walking around the lakes here we rent a house here in South Africa and on the farm here and after I had fasted, I think that time I fasted like three and a half days or so. And my wife and I were walking and she had a vision. And I've shared this in the other video. I won't go into all of it, but she basically saw Donald Trump as an eagle being bound by chains trying to get out. And he was working the chains. And finally, finally, she said it was like, you know, a, a plug in the tub, how you yank it on the chain and it, there's that suction that just wants to hold it. She said the suction on that thing, on the, one of the pillars that was holding the chains, that was holding the, the eagle down, the, the pillar did not want to come up, come up out of the ground. None of them did. It was six of them there in the ground. And finally it started to rain and that's what loosened the ground and allowed the eagle to work his way out and it's interesting uh, just off to the left here there's a bad rainstorm looks like it's coming my way <laughs> but that's what we need amen we need the Holy Spirit to come down the rain of God uh, I think of um, uh, was it uh, Hosea 6 3 where it talks about the rain and he shall come to us like the rain like the spring rain watering the earth amen and the oil of God too, the anointing now today is January the 10th and as I'm looking over YouTube and many videos and many channels and different preachers and prophets and apostles different ones Many of them have lost faith, not all of them. Some of them are, are holding in there, but some of them have, have even gone on and uh, apologized that they were so they're sorry that they said that Donald Trump was going to win the election. Look, if anybody should probably believe that Donald Trump is not going to win, it would be someone like me. I had a very vivid dream. And I believe it was a warning from God that Biden was going to be elected. Now, there's a difference between being elected and being 
president, really, you know? Um, he, he won his election through, you know what, <laughs> which we're not allowed to say anymore. So that's code. Uh, you know, they say, everybody's saying uh, the code word. Well, there is no code word. I'm not even going to go there. But you know what we're talking about. And so Donald Trump, um, I believe, is, is the one chosen by God and by the people. And God is not going to desert us. Now that I know. Now, what I saw in that dream and what I, what I sense is the intent, the strong intention of the devil is to put America in bondage. To put the world in bondage. You can see it now with all these lockdowns. The devil wants the seven year tribulation spoken of in, in the book of Revelation to come. And don't think Revelation, I've got most of the book of Revelation memorized. You ought to check out a lot of my videos that are on my channel and on my wife's channel, Judith Sides. But, um, and I've got one recently uh, update, up, uploaded video called Revelation in a Nutshell. Check that out. Whew. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Send the rain. Praise God. Um, where was I? So, the Holy Spirit wants to move in a mighty way in our country and in our world. Amen. And we just need to have faith. And if anybody should be doubtful, it should be someone like me that had a dream like that. But I'm believing that that was a warning from God for, for someone like me to pray. And I've been praying and I've been fasting and I love Donald Trump. I take a bullet for him, okay? And uh, I'm just really believing that God will show up and do a miracle in these last 10 days. We've, as of today, January 10th, 2021, we've got 10 days before the 20th. God can work a miracle. And I'm holding to that. My wife has seen more than one vision and a she just had a dream this week that uh, her car was she doesn't have a silver station wagon. It was a silver station wagon in the dream. She, when she came back out into the parking lot, she couldn't find her car. She a kept asking everybody, and the people that, that uh, were there, security, they, it was getting dark, and they had flashlights. They, they were looking and helping her, and then one man just came up out of the blue, and he said, don't worry, ma'am. I know how to find your car. We're going to find it. Don't worry. And, you know, things get stolen from us, don't they? And you know what I'm talking about. Things get stolen from us. But God knows how to get them back. God can get them back. But it will take God Almighty. You know, even Donald Trump is beginning to just say, look, you know, there's going to be a transition of power. And... I believe that, look, what did uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say? Let's go to that. Daniel 3.16. Listen to this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king because he wanted everybody to bow down and they refused to bow down. He said, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, very windy here. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O oh king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image or of gold you have set up. Now notice, they didn't say, they didn't say, well, you know, God is able to, God is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, no, they, they were positive. They said, look, they said, first, God 
we serve is able to save us from it and he will rescue us from your hand but even if he does not see they were positive they were it's like when we pray when we pray for Donald Trump we just need to be positive and I'm talking fasting too okay we need to fast I challenge everyone go on a three-day fast okay we're gonna get to that in a minute if I got time before the rain starts here um, but they, they said yes God is able let's just say like this yes God is able to deliver Donald Trump and God will deliver Donald Trump but even if he doesn't deliver Donald Trump we are still going to praise the Lord hallelujah God is still on the throne God is still with us what did what did Job say Job said though he slay me yet will I praise him he said that in Job um, 13 15 okay so you can check that out but now and it's hard for me because uh, I should have brought my hair tie <laughs> I didn't know it's gonna be like this so look Shadrach Meshach and Abednego did not bow the knee they chose to believe in God Almighty they had a burning fiery furnace standing right before them and they said no we are not and when when the king saw their attitude that they were not they were bound and determined not to bow down he instructed his people to make the furnace seven times hotter than normal so much so that the brave soldiers that he commanded to throw the Shadrach and Meshach, Meshach and Abednego into the furnace those soldiers that threw them in the flames were so powerful that they licked out from the furnace and incinerated and burnt and killed the very men that were standing there outside the furnace throwing them in so you can imagine uh, how bad that furnace was and how hot it was but notice what it says here hallelujah it says when when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were thrown into the furnace uh, and, and they they fell into the furnace then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors weren't there three men that we tied up and threw up threw into the fire they replied certainly O King and he said look I see four men four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed and the fourth man looks like the son of the gods that was his secular way of saying you know he didn't know that's the son of God the son of God met Midshak Shadrach and Abednego in the furnace we are in the furnace right now friends we are there we're going through hell amen the whole country indeed the whole world and I thank everyone around the world I'm here in South Africa there's people all around the world praying for Donald Trump praying for this election pleading the blood of Jesus they're praying and they're fasting and they're seeking God and they're humbling themselves we need to humble ourselves we need to pray and fast everyone can fast for three days at least come on we need to do it and let me just share with you hallelujah what I'm talking about Esther 4 15 go to your Bibles have your Bibles ready hallelujah I'm out here man I <laughs> if this rain starts coming down my camera is gonna get in some trouble that's okay amen Oof. where am I at Talk about being on the fly here. Uh, Esther, come on, there you go. There you go. It's not the biggest book in there and it, with the wind and everything. Okay, Esther chapter 4. And um, verses four, 15 and 17. Okay. So now the story is there was an evil man in the kingdom named Haman. And 
he was a powerful man. You know, like a Nancy Pelosi or, a Pelosi or a Chuck Schumer. He, he had power. And he didn't like Mordecai. So he built, um, well, that's later in the book that he built a gallows for him. But earlier in the book, he didn't like the Jews. And he wanted all the Jews in the kingdom exterminated. And he didn't realize that the queen of the king was a secret Jewess. She was a Jewish lady. And uh, her uncle Mordecai uh, helped raise her. Anyway, they came to her and told her about this plot to kill all of her people. And what did she say? She sent a message and she said, Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, the man who raised her. And he said, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susha and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as, do, as, as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I die, I die. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. See, it was against the law to go before the king when he was in his throne room. Even if you were his wife, you had to be requested. So she fasted for three days and all the people fasted. Now, I know there's a remnant and a chosen, hallelujah, a uh, number of, of Christians that have been already fasting. But I want this video, if anything, I want to challenge you to fast. And if you can't fast a water fast, eat salads, drink juice, but fast. Maybe add an extra day or two if you're going to cheat a little bit, okay? But we need, we need to fast. We need to humble ourselves to the Lord and pray and seek God as 2 Corinthians 7.14 says. If we can get more people to fast... And we don't need a lot more. We don't, you know, God isn't into numbers, amen. He doesn't need a million people fasting and praying and seeking God. He needs a remnant. He needs that special number. And we just need to keep praying. We all need to gather together. I've fasted many days already. I might even fast some more before this is over. Um, but Esther had the whole, she requested everyone. She said, let all the people pray and fast for three days and think of that she didn't say fast for a week fast for 21 days fast for 40 days that's great if we can do that praise God if we can the more days the better praise God we need to press in you know we're in a spiritual battle friends this is real this is spiritual warfare we think of warfare as tanks and and nuclear bombs there are spiritual nuclear bombs hallelujah and we need to we need to shoot some of them out there now real quick there's some lightning flashing around here but I wanted to share with you what my wife said uh, which I haven't shared she said you know as we were walking around the lake here she said you know the Democrats they sure do love abortion and they and they are they're standing firm on late-term abortion and even partial birth abortion okay um, and even live birth abortion whatever so she said because they believe in that she said one day one day walking around here she said you know I believe God wants to do a late-term abortion on Joe Biden Joe Biden is an evil egg that the devil wants to hatch upon the world and upon America and we need to just pray that this egg gets aborted that it doesn't hatch hallelujah it needs to just be aborted and this baby that the devil wants to hatch needs to be aborted in the name and blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah we just need to take hold and you got an assignment. Hallelujah. I want you all to read Hebrews 11. 
Man, I was gonna go over a bunch of it, but I don't hardly have the time. But um, I wanna say to you too about Revelations. Don't underestimate the book of Revelation. <laughs> Amen, brother. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You heard, you heard the Lord now. He said, no, he's also agreeing with me, okay? You don't underestimate the book of Revelation. Why? Because Revelations chapter 1, verse 1, the very first verse says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. See, everything in that book must soon take place. Now, we don't know when it, when it is and how it's all going to happen. And maybe it will be that J Joe Biden will be our president. But you know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying to God? I'm saying, God, if it must come, if it must come that the Antichrist will come upon the earth, if it must come that we must have an evil leader leading our country in America, don't let it happen the way it's happened in this last election, Lord. Because the people did not want this. The people did not want this. We haven't, we haven't chosen this. Okay. Other elements, satanic elements have chosen this. I pray that one day, if America ever does fall, it will be because the American people themselves decided legally, okay, to go that direction. Hallelujah. But I'm standing firm with y'all, friends. I'm believing God, okay? We're going to just keep fighting and believing. Amen. And, and, and sh show the Lord that we're serious. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's see. What there was one, one other thing I wanted to share. Mm, so much I wanted to share. Hebrews 11. That's right. Hebrews 11. Because that's faith. And you know, one thing I've been reading a lot of comments on other people's channels, you know, different preachers and that, and man, people feel beat, beat down. They feel like, you know, their faith is being challenged, but that's good. That's a good thing. You know, we need to challenge. We need to have our faith challenged and we need to hold fast. And if I do got the time and it don't rain on me, I'm just going to go through this. Look at what the first couple verses of, of, of uh, Hebrews 11 says. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. See, God made everything out of nothing. If he can make the whole universe out of nothing, don't you think that he can deliver Donald Trump? It's nothing to God. We just need to pray. God says, is there anything I cannot do? We need to believe in the God that parted the Red Sea when Moses held up. Hallelujah, let me show you. I got a stick here, okay? When Moses held up the staff, remember that in the Bible? And the, the Red Sea parted, hallelujah. And we are right now up against the Red Sea. We don't got nowhere to go. The Red Sea ain't parted yet. And we're up against, we got our backs up against the wall. The devil thinks he's got us surrounded, right? But God is for us. What does is, what is, uh, Romans 8.31 say? If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Amen. With God, we are a majority. Listen to this. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice. Verse 4. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life. Why? Because he pleased God. Hallelujah. He didn't even die. He just went right to heaven. Hallelujah. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark. Hallelujah. And it took him a hundred years to build that ark. A hundred years, that man had to go out there and be ridiculed and, and, and scorned, and he built that ark by hand. He didn't even have any hammer or nails or anything. I don't know how he did that. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham. Verse 11, by faith, Abraham. Oh man, that man, he was, he's something. Then, hallelujah. Verse 17, <laughs> by faith, Abraham again 
When God tested him, by faith Abraham, when God tested him, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. See, we're being in a we're in a test right now, friends. We Christians around the world, especially Americans now, we are being tested. We need to hang in there, keep praying, keep believing, and see if God doesn't part the Red Sea. I'm not I'm not going to prophetically say for sure he is. I tell you what, privately I'm praying that it happens on the 18th of January because 18 is 666, which is the devil's number. 666, 18. And I want to give the devil a black eye. I want it to happen on a 666 day, just like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Hallelujah. Before, I won't go into the whole thing. I don't have the time. But she died on the 18th of September. Hallelujah. Which is, and, and I had been praying about that, but I, I'll, that's, I'll leave that for another video. Okay. So, by faith, verse 20, Isaac. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob. Verse 20, 24, or yeah, 23, by faith Moses. Verse 24 again, uh, Moses again, by faith Moses. And what does it say? When he, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He didn't, he, he refused to ha be, be dressed in all that you know, fancy garb from the palace. And he refused to have people kneel to him. He refused to take all the glory of the world. How many people would refuse that? If you were given all the chances to have all the glory and people just swoon on you, man, most of us would take that. Moses refused it. And you know what? It says here, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Hallelujah. By faith, verse 29, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. Hallelujah, I like that. Verse, uh, man, I, it's hard for me. Verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. They just marched and marched and marched. We need to keep marching. Keep marching. Amen. Don't give up. Keep marching. Those walls are going to come down. We just got to keep believing. Keep trusting. And you know what? We're going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even if God doesn't deliver America, we believe He will. We believe He can. We believe He's able. And we believe He will. But even if He doesn't, that's my attitude. Even if He doesn't, I'm going to be firm in my faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is with us every day. Hallelujah. We just need to pray. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Woo. Amen. Praise God. We need to smoke the devil out. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And then, this dear book goes on. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions and quenched the fury of the flames. Hallelujah. We, we, we have a great God, my friends. We have a great God. He quenched the fury of the flames. And He knows how to keep, get us out of these flames. He quenched the fury of the flames for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? We are in the flames. We are right now in the, in the hot water. But He knows how to quench them. Hallelujah. Praise God. And they escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength. Hallelujah. I like that. And who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released. Why? So that they might gain a better resurrection. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Can you imagine? You're being tortured. And they say, okay, we will release you. And you're like, no, don't release me. Keep torturing me. Keep, keep at it. Well, why is that? Because I want to get a better resurrection. I want, to stand, I want to be able to stand on that day and say, I was tortured for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're not letting me out of here. You're going to torture me to death. Now, there's people that have done that, friends. And who are we? We're upset because our, our little gizmo that turns on our TV, the battery ran out. Well, we don't have this or we don't have that. It's time we grew up, friends. There's people that have died for this book. That have died for their faith. Amen? Now, the storm's about ready to come on me. It's, boy, the wind is coming. So I'm going to let you go. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to my channel here. I love you guys. And keep the faith. Let me pray. Hallelujah. Lord God, just as this storm is a coming, I see it just off to the side. And the wind is a blowing. I pray, Lord, that this is a sign that there will be a holy wind of God. Hallelujah. A holy unctioning of the Holy Spirit to move, to move upon America in the name and blood of Jesus Christ, in the halls of Congress, in the halls of the U.S. Supreme Court, in the halls of the White House. Move upon our government. Move upon the FBI, the CIA, all the clandestine powers of the earth. Move upon them. Let the truth come forth. Show your mighty glory. Show your mighty power. We refuse to take no for an answer in the mighty name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we know you are able. You are able. And you alone can deliver us now. Congress has spoken. Biden has been certified. He is the president-elect. But, Lord, you alone can save America now. Speak to the Supreme Court, Lord. Make them change their mind. Let Do something. But if you don't, if you don't, we love you and we serve you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the matchless name of Jesus, Praise you, Jesus. Pray in your prayer language too, my friends. May all the glory go to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is Tommy Sides coming to you from Mapumalanga, South Africa. About ready to get rained on. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So far the rain's just escaped me. I feel a little bit of it. Praise God, but it's all around. I can see it all around. But we just need to be in prayer, friends. I love you all. I love you to bits. And I love our president. And I know you, most of you love him too. Let's just keep believing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And with that big thunder clap, I'm going to bid you goodbye. With a holy kiss. Amen. Love you guys. Have you ever felt like God has abandoned you? Have you ever felt your soul crying without hope? Have you ever doubted in His holy word for you? Have you ever wondered if He's heard your prayer? God doesn't strand His children on an island all alone God doesn't strand his children In a desert without hope He will send the raven He will send the dove He will send his spirit He will send his love Have you 
ever waited patiently for God to move? Have you sat there in the darkness all alone? God will make a way, but you must keep the faith. The dry desert dunes are calling you. Yes, they are. Is a oasis you will find. You make up your mind to follow Him in all you say. God does his friend his children in a desert without hope. He will send the raven, he will send the dove, he will send the spirit, he will send his nerve. Have you ever walked a long, hard road all by yourself? Have your friends turned and gone the other way? God, He sailed there to take your load of care. He's burning His lighter than you think. Yes, it is the salvation you will find. Will give you peace of mind to follow Him, complete and satisfied.